Ronnie, thanks very much for, for chatting to me. Um, I've got to ask, at the end of my career, my standards just dropped so quickly, so fast. How, how, what, what, what are you doing? How, how are you keeping your standards so I, good? I don't really know, really. I just think I've just... Um, I just try to enjoy it as much as I can, you know, and there's times out there where sometimes I think I'm not hungry enough, you know, because I've sort of started doing other stuff and because um, I just wasn't happy just playing snooker all the mm. time. It drove me insane. And I phoned you a couple of times and said, Stephen, I'm in bits, I'm not enjoying it. And you went, <laughs> well, I was like that towards the end of my career. And I thought, I don't want to spend 10 years doing something that I don't enjoy. So I thought, right, just try and use it like a hobby. Yeah. Try and think, no matter how bad I think I'm playing, it's still not as bad as the fella down the club that can't make 30. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I just thought, do, you know... Do, do you like work on your game? Do you do anything like technical or do you just play or practice? No, I, I kind of... I stopped about six years ago working technically on the game because I thought I was just over-analysing everything. Yeah, yeah. And I just thought, you know, just just try and have good, solid foundations. Just try and, you know, keep as still you can on the shot. Try and keep the cue as parallel as you can yeah. and, tr and just trust where you're aiming. Yeah. And as soon as you start to try and steer balls in, it's like it's like a disease. It's kind of, it gets into every part of your game. And I thought I'd rather miss by a mile but commit than <laughs> sort of get a few but twitching them in, you know? Yeah. So, so, what's, so what's more important to you, like playing well, enjoying it or, or actually winning? Is it, do you get more enjoyment from just like going out there and, and buzzing? I, th I, think, I think buzzing's the key. Mm. I think, you know, because when you're playing well, you enjoy it no matter what, even in practice. Yeah. You know, if I'm buzzing in practice, I think, yeah, this is great great you know um, and the same in matches but I think also um, there's an element that if you are winning it's still that's that's a nice feeling you know yeah, I mean well, I mean you was just you was a winning machine I, I love to win but I was still you know if I didn't play well on one I'd be a bit frustrated I've got Steve Peters on speed dial <laughs> says, Steve what's going on you know and I speak to him like every other day I'm, you know I thought I've got another two three years I'm really going to try and see if I can get something out of my game um, last two years I took me off the ball so I've made a conscious effort to try and practice a bit more and sh you know make sure I'm at home enough to, to do that and get a little bit of a balance and, and see if I can play some half decent snooker yeah and in terms of like record I've obviously through my career Davis had like was all the records and, and then through my career it was great to have that target mm. obviously you've taken most of mine now there's a couple that are still there is, is that any motivation or, or you just um, you just want to just win you're not thinking about anything in the future or? i think that, listen don't get me wrong records are great but um i mean i find when i look at a record i think it's just a mountain to climb and mm. to think of trying to win another three world, world titles to overtake you would make me want to not play ever again do you know what i mean really because, yeah because to win one world title mm. especially at this stage of my career is is difficult so you don't set I? any targets at the start of the season I, I set myself realistic targets so I know you've got 18 majors I've not got 17 I'd like to try and sort of I think I've got a chance of getting near that the yeah. world's is that'd be a dream but I doubt it'll ever happen the, mine was always like the start of the season the world and the masters they were my, my big two yeah I mean like listen the world's and the, the world's is the There's governor so many tournaments now though so many tournaments but still the world's is the governor when you win the world you just swap you could win six other tournaments, but I'd swap it just for one world. There's nothing like playing at the Crucible, playing fantastic. Mm. It's just the most amazing venue. And obviously the Masters is great because it's top 16. It's like, you know, in London and it's a great event. But like you say, there's so many big tournaments now. I mean, I'm just, I mean, I won in Barnsley. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I don't care where it is. A win's a win, you know what I mean? You're the best player I've ever seen in my career. So who's, who's coming up that you think can possibly take it to that next level? I think um, I think it's. I mean, I thought Judd might do it, mm. um, but he's it inconsistent, isn't he? Yeah, and he doesn't win. He doesn't win enough big. You know, like you know, like Selby wins the big titles, yeah. wins the big matches, and when it gets a bit close, you fancy Selby. I don't know. Yeah. He's just got that thing about him. I think to be a prolific winner, you got a bottle. You had it. Yeah. Higgins had it. Um, and, and Selby's got it and Williams had it you know mm -hmm. and Williams was a bit limited with his Q power so he yeah. kind of like couldn't score as heavy as you or Selby but I think you need to have that you know Q power so he yeah. kind of um, and, and Selby's got it and Williams had it you know mm -hmm. and Williams was a bit limited with his Q power so he yeah. kind of like couldn't score as heavy as you or Selby but I think you need to have that you know big match uh, temperament and when it gets a bit close you kind of raise your gear um, so I think it, you need to find someone that's got that that can you know has the bottle really and yeah. and, and, I, and I don't know who's out there you uh, know yeah. we yet, we maybe we've yet to see another Hendry Higgins type player. I certainly don't think um, I mean in the UK I don't I don't see anyone coming. Out. I don't watch a lot of snooker unless I'm unless I'm working on it now. But um, you think it's got to be someone from China? You would think, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean obviously China. Um, but no one's coming along in the same classes, Ding, so far, have they? 
No, no, not at all. I mean, Ding's a pure class, class act. Um, but again, does he want it bad enough? I think he's kind of on that thing where he's got a great life in China. He gets paid very well. Yeah. And I think he's enjoying going he's on holidays. Money, you know, he? he's got R8s, <laughs> he's got Ferraris, he's got this. And it's like, you know, what do I want to bother coming to Barnsley but to play snooky? I know, but that's what, that's what like, so, so good about, like, say, Alan Lee, that you're just still playing the standard. And it really, like, annoys me to watch Ding. It just looks like he, he's not bothered. Yeah. And I can't believe it. At least... Even when you play badly, you look like you're bothered. Yeah, at yeah. times he just doesn't turn up like that. Yeah, no, I think I think uh, I mean I'm, I love the game. I love to play. I love to compete. I love, you know, I'm, I'm you know if I don't play well, I'll be, I'm still hard on myself. I just try to be less hard on myself. And I just I don't know. I think Ding. I don't know what it is with Ding. You know, I get frustrated with myself because you think he's such a cl- class player. But you know, if you're talking about players coming through, I think maybe Luca Purcell is the one that maybe yeah. stands out. So laid back, so relaxed. And um, my friend managed him. He said, as long as he's got a pizza, he said, he's, he's, he's happy. You know, he was coming, apparently he was coming back from China and he had his queue and he said, well, you can't take that on the plane. He went, well, we'll keep it here then. I'm not going to see flight. He left his queue in China. And I was like, that, my queue stays everywhere with me. I mean, that's how relaxed People say there's no characters in the game anymore. Yeah, no, he's a great, great lad. And I think, you know, maybe like his age is so young as well. Do you ever look back at matches in your career? Do you ever look like... Some, sometimes I'll, like, I'll be at home and I'm bored and I maybe yeah. flick through. I mean, I, I never watch myself, yeah. but sometimes you flick through and see old matches. Do you ever do that? I try not to because I kind of like, I looked at so some... Look at your technique or whatever. Yeah, like. I, start, I start sort of over-analyzing. But I mean, I did look back the um, last couple of months thinking, well, because I thought I played really well in 2012 to 2015. Mm. And I noticed a couple of things yeah. different in my technique. Not not massively. And I thought, well, maybe try and work on do you, that. Do you think you've changed your game at all? I, I, when people say, oh, you know, Ronnie's like, the, he's, you know, the, you, my name is an attacking player. But I think you play quite a percentage game now. Because you know, like, if you get a chance, you're just going di- to dish up. Yeah. So you, yeah. you wait for other players to make the yeah. mistake. Yeah. So at the end, you've, you've gone more that way. Yeah, I think I think that comes... You refused quite a lot, didn't you? No, really. Yeah, because I think, well, why push the boat out? Mm. You know, I'm, I'm quite comfortable playing the safety game. You know, my long potting's a lot better than it used mm. to be. Um, I'm scoring as well as I ever have done. And I think, well, you know, um, you know you've got to play the right shot, really. You know, and why should I leave them an easy opportunity when, you know, I'm, I'm happy to play the, the waiting game? And I think that comes with a bit of confidence in your game. I think yeah. sometimes I used to attack because I wasn't confident of playing a good safety shot. Nowadays, I think, you know, I fancy I'm going to play an half-decent safety yeah. shot. So, you know, and it's just about just trying to keep the pressure on your opponent sometimes, yeah. you know. See, when you they come to tournaments, they build up the TV. It's it's it's, it's all geared to you. Do, do you do you like that? You just get used to it now. That's all. Like, a lot of it's all about you. <laughs> Sometimes I think you know um, they expect me to like fly out my brains and make tons nineties and eighties and just gonna push it's over. Like they just want to see you, though, don't they? The... Yeah, but there's still that added yeah, pressure course, that you yeah. think. Because Jimmy on, had it, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, Jimmy had it. Yeah, when they say come on, money, and, <laughs> and then as you're losing, the come on, money's get a bit. Oh, come on, money, <laughs> and you think, oh, well, I'm letting everybody down. So. You kind of do feel a bit of pressure, but then when you start to play well, you kind of like get in it, and you start to get involved in the gap match. I didn't think at least I've competed. I've gave them something you know uh, yeah. worth watching. And um, but no, you just I try I try to block it out, and I just try to just enjoy playing and think yeah. you know what I'm here to play. And if I lose, no big deal. You know? Yeah. How, how often when you're playing? I remember obviously when I when I was number one, it was a great feeling. How many? How like, often do you play players? You tell you what, well, just you can't beat me. It's like you just get that feeling, you know. Just know, don't you? You just get a feel. Well, it doesn't matter what I do, he can't beat me today. Yeah. Like, there must be. I don't know what's maybe Selby, John Higgins, mm, mm. Robertson's not as strong as he used to be. No. Um, possibly on his day, Trump. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But who else is like everyone else? Just that we, you know. Well, I think if I, I play decent, he can't beat me. Yeah. If, listen, if I'm playing decent, I just think this is going to be a lovely day. You mm. know, I mean, let's go out. You know, there's no better feeling. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's yeah. the best feeling in the world. Best feeling in the world. <laughs> Um, but then there's the flip side that if it isn't going well, then you kind of you know you have to tough it out and the anxiety can kick in. But yeah, I mean that's what. That's but why even I, then they've got to go over the winning line. And you yeah, watch them the last yeah. game and you can just sense the nervousness. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But like you say, I think while you're confident and enjoying the game and you mm. think you know if, you know I'm consistently playing all right, how do you give something up that you think you know exactly, what, yeah. I've got this game. You know, in, in, you know, I can, I can control what's going on. You know, so it's very difficult to give up. And I think I'll keep continuing playing and expecting to win while I'm feeling like that. I was just thinking about like my, my career, and obviously one part of, of, of I think my down, downfall that weakened me as a mm. as a, a winning machine and an animal was like I start to get friendly with players, mm. socialise. You, mm. you you keep yourself a bit apart, don't you? You don't really socialise with everyone. Yeah, and I don't intend. Yeah, I mean, I I I, I kind of have uh, things to keep me busy and occupied. Yeah, you're like many like friends on the circuit or. 
Not really. I mean, really? I, like, I get on most with all the players, yeah. you know, because most snooker players are good as gold. It's mm. like, hello, whatever. But um, I try and stay away from you players to, because yeah. it, all they do is talk it. about snooker, they talk about <laughs> ranking <laughs> points, they talk about down. politics, <laughs> and, I just, and I feel depressed. Yeah. I come out of there and I go, man, I'm like, you know, I need, I need the therapy. The kicks they go and it's the like, bad yeah, kisses. Yeah, I have to get Steve. I say, Steve, Steve Peters, I've just had an hour of the players at breakfast. I'm in bits. He's like, stay away from them. And so, no, I just try and just... You know, just try to recreate what I do at home at tournaments. That's, that's run, eat well, and you know, just chill and enjoy mm. playing. Just enjoy, it, you know, just be treat it like being on a holiday, really, rather than a chore. All the best for the rest of the season. Stephen, thank pleasure you. to talk to you. Top man. Cheers. Really.